Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've got a great tip for you today regarding drop shots. This is potentially the most valuable tip that I give. And this is something that I can't tell you how many times I've had like co-anglers in my boat or other anglers in my boat that when I show them this, they are really impressed and they really like it. Now, having said that, it's not some big sexy tip, but it's something that will improve your efficiency and your performance on the water when using a drop shot. You know, I want to give you a little story here. So when I fished the uh, Major League Fishing Pro Circuit event on the St. Lawrence River a year and a half ago, it's the event I took second place in. I fished a drop shot. I would say a drop shot accounted for probably 80% of my fish in that event. But I was fishing all kinds of different places. I was fishing anywhere from the main river, strongest current, 40 foot of water, to 20 foot of water, current seams, to uh, eddies along the bank, to shallow flats that were 12 foot of water, shallow flats that were three foot of water. And because of that, I needed a whole bunch of different setups. You know, when you're fishing that many different types of areas, having just one weight on your drop shot is not necessarily ideal. And what I mean by that is if I'm fishing, you know, out in the main river in 40 feet of water, I've probably got a, a half to a three quarter ounce weight. And I tend to like the round ball weights in that situation because you want your bait rolling along the bottom to create a natural presentation. So a round ball works really well for that. Now, if I were to move shallow onto some of the flats where there was grass, a round ball is not my top choice. A round ball will tend to get balled up in the grass. I like to go with a cylinder style weight because that falls in and out of the grass and comes in and out really easily. And then of course, based on the depth of water you're fishing, you're changing weights consistently. You know, I'd be fishing anywhere from an eighth ounce in those three foot non-currented flats to a three quarter ounce weight. And I'm changing in a lot of cases between lead, between tungsten, between cylinder versus round ball, all different shapes. Now in the tournament, I had the luxury of having four or five rods on the deck rigged with drop shots because I kind of knew what I wanted in each situation. So I had one pre-rigged ready to go. In practice, I only had one or two rods rigged with a drop shot. But what I did to figure out the weights that I wanted had to do with me being willing to switch weights consistently. Now, I'm here to tell you guys, a lot of times, as much as we all think we're extremely efficient, a lot of times we are very lazy on the water too. And when it comes to retying, changing baits, changing colors, changing drop shot weights, we tend to do it a handful of times, but probably not as much as we should to try to figure out how the fish are best responding to your presentation. So one of the ways that I've, I've figured out over the years that limits my laziness on the water when it comes to drop shots is instead of tying my line directly to my weight, and I wanna point something out here, I've talked about this before, most drop shot weights come with this little line pinch at the top, you know, you just pull your line into it. I think a lot of anglers tend not to do that because they lose more weights if their line is just slid up in there. So most anglers end up tying their weight on with some form of knot. The thing with this, if, if I tied a knot on here, it would be down in the little open area. And then at that point, because my line tie comes off of my drop shot in a certain, on one of the sides, it tends to lead to line twist. So what I do is I open up all of these line pinches so that I can tie a knot at the top of that. And then at that point, my knot comes off, I limit the amount of line twist. Now that's not the tip. The tip is simply when I open that up, what it allows me to do is change my weight quickly because when I rig a drop shot, like I've got here, if I can get it under control, instead of tying directly to my weight, I put a little speed clip at the bottom. So I can simply slide my weight, if I can see, I can simply change my weight extremely quickly just by snapping those in and out. And what that does is it allows me to be very efficient on the water. So for me, if I'm out drop shotting, I simply carry a bunch of different weights in my pocket. So if I'm going down the bank and I'm using a half ounce and all of a sudden I wanna to switch to a quarter ounce, I grab it out of my pocket, swap it in and out. Now, one of the keys to this is because 
I've got the snap. I'm not losing my leader length every time I retie, which is one of the problems. If you retie, if you do tie a knot to your weight, every time you retie, your leader length is probably getting shorter because you're using up some of your line to the point where you either have to retie completely to get your correct leader length back, or you're just going with a shorter leader length and potentially costing you fish. You know, if you figured out that the leader length that's working best is 16 inches, you don't necessarily want to retie and lose two, three inches to retie just to change weights. The other key here is it makes you much more efficient on the water because it limits the amount of tackle that you need to bring with you. This is a tip that I give to co-anglers uh, all the time that fish with me. They come in the boat with eight, 10, 12 rods and they've got three rigged up with a drop shot. And the reasoning is, well, I need a different, different weight size. I don't want to have to retie a drop shot the entire time. So I show them the speed clip and they, they're, you know, they love it. They can put away two rods so that limits them from carrying two rods. The same thing for bank anglers. A lot of time bank, link, bank anglers don't want to carry a bunch of rods, but a lot of times they come across maybe a shallow flat, maybe a deep channel bend, all kinds of different types of water depths where they need to change their weights a lot. So this is a quick way to do that. Now I want to point out that the speed clip is not necessarily the only way to do it. I like the speed clip because it's it's really small and it's a very, very quick and easy way to go about it. You can use a small snap, you can use a small swivel. There's different ways to go about it. But the point here is by tying on the speed clip or a snap, you can become much, much more efficient on the water so that if you're going down the bank, you've got one drop shot rigged up and you're fishing grass and then all of a sudden your grass ends, maybe you get into some rock, you can quickly make that change to the point where you're fishing the right weight of, of both the heaviness as well as a shape in the correct situation without having to retie completely. It's something that is just, uh, it's been extremely beneficial to me over the years. I've never talked about this before, but it is something that I've done for years. And it's, it's just something that I know makes me a much better angler. So I'm sharing it with you guys. So go out, get yourself some little clips, tiny little swivels, little tiny snaps, whatever it is. To me, the speed clip is the fastest just because it's a quick snap in and snap out versus having to try to open a little clip and all that. But it really just comes down to it makes you a better angler on the water. The only negative is if you break off, you lose a little speed clip with it. But in reality, that's going to happen anyways. And you can buy those. You can buy them in bulk for really pretty cheap. So it's not a big expense. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Give it a try. I'm telling you, you're going to like this one. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. I'll have a new tip for you tomorrow.